Okay, all right. Let's ask Mr. Matthew Breiser if he sees the possibility as well. Mr. Breiser, uh, the question I'm essentially sort of was hoping to, the point I was trying to get at was Iran's role here. It's, Iran's been a financial, a political, a military support for Lebanon's Hezbollah. And, uh, you know, they played a role that is not you know, as uh, recent as the past few years, but goes back decades. With that, Hezbollah in power and being threatened to be removed, do you think there is any possibility that what the protesters of Lebanon are asking for can be achieved? Well, I certainly hope it can be achieved. And Mr. Nisi knows infinitely more than I do about the possibility uh, of the goals actually being achieved. But I, mm -hmm. to get, I think, at your Deeper at your question, I think you're asking, will Iran permit this to happen right, with, with the influence of Hezbollah on the ground? And, mm -hmm. well, you know, Iran is kind of running out of the ability to, to call the shots uh, in a lot of places. Iran has effectively been at war for quite a long time. I mean, the war in Yemen is essentially a, a, a proxy war. Uh, Iran has been fighting on the ground uh, in Syria, uh, often with military forces that are not in uniform. Iranian militias were fighting in Iraq uh, against ISIS. Uh, Iran plays such an outsized political role in Iraq. And that all costs a lot of money. And money that the Iranian government really clearly does not have, which is why there are these protests now happening also in Iran. So I think, as I, I'm saying, I think Iran's ability to shape these events uh, is is limited and showing its limits. Now, the question, though, is can all the various groupings in, in the most fractious of political uh, places, Lebanon, which is kind of the, the template for sectarianism and political division, um, can the, the, the groups that are in the opposition, as Mr. Nisi said, come together to oust the current government and then elect that technocratic government of experts. Now, I, I, I lived through, while I worked in the White House, mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the Georgian Revolution, the Rose Revolution. Um, that's exactly what the Georgians did. They convinced then President Edouard Shevardnadze to leave. Then a group of young, very young reformers, late 20s and early 30s, came to power uh, and they enacted very powerful reforms that kept them popular. But after a while, uh, while being elites, uh, people kind of lost sight of the lofty goals, became comfortable, and then wanted to preserve their power. Fortunately, in Georgia, they had put in place sufficiently strong institutions that there was a democratic transition in October of 2012. But now people are on the streets again, thinking that that government is now not living up to the revolutionary goals. So I guess what I'm saying is there's a long road ahead in Lebanon, but I, I pray that the, that the various opposition people will unite and get there.